All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to post process your audio so that it sounds professional. Now, you wouldn't actually believe how important sound quality is for a podcast. Now, oftentimes people will listen to your podcast, and if the sound quality is not up to standards, they'll immediately stop listening. So that's why it's very important to make sure the sound quality sounds really good for whatever you're putting out. Okay, and so, uh, and this is true, you know, even if you have a very high quality microphone, you can always improve your audio further by post-processing it. And you're definitely going to want to add some sort of custom intro and a custom outro for your podcast as well to brand your podcast. And furthermore, the audio that you've recorded from Skype, and you know, for example, if you're doing an interview-based podcast, uh, the person on the other end probably doesn't have a very good mic as well, so you'll likely need to kind of massage the audio in order to pr uh, improve the audio quality. And so for the purposes of today's demo, I'm going to show you how to make your sound quality sound amazing just using the free software package called Audacity. Okay, and so what you're going to need before you start this tutorial is you're going to actually need to download Audacity and install the application on your machine. And you're also going to need to download what I call Chris's Dynamic Compressor Plugin. And you know, once you've downloaded this plugin, you're going to want to install this plugin on Audacity by copying the plugin into the plugins folder inside of your Audacity installation folder. And you know, below this video, I'll provide instructions and download links for this software so you don't have to um, look for it. Okay, and after you have those two pieces of software, you're actually now ready to begin. Okay, so this is what the Audacity interface looks like as soon as you launch the tool. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drag and drop the WAV file to the Audacity interface. Okay, so I'm dragging the audio here. And you want to make sure you select make a copy of the files before editing. And what this does is it makes a copy of the WAV file such that even if you screw up, it doesn't matter because you can always fall back onto the original. Okay, and so this is what the audio file um, looks like as soon as you bring it up. And I thought I'd just give you a very high-level overview about the tools and what Audacity allows you to do. So first off, there's this magnifying glass tool. And if you left-click on the audio, it zooms in. And if you right-click on it, it zooms out. Okay. The other tool I want to show you is called the selector tool. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to select a very specific piece of audio for editing. So for example, if I selected this beginning part here and I wanted to eliminate that piece of audio, I would click on this pair of scissors here, which cuts the audio. Okay, And as you can see here, when I clicked on that, the audio disappeared. Okay, And at any time, you can type in uh, Control-Z to undo whatever you last did in case you screw up. The other tool I want to show you is this tool called the Silence tool. And whenever you click on this button, it actually makes completely silent whatever you've selected in your audio. Okay, The other tool I want to show you is what's called the Time Shift tool. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to move your audio in time. Okay, And this is actually really helpful when you're trying to splice in your intro and your outro for your audio. Okay, But for the most part, those are the four main tools that I actually use for Audacity. And now I'm going to focus a little bit more on how to improve the sound quality for your audio. In other words, how to post-process it so that the audio sounds professional. Okay, And so, uh, you know, first things first, remember you know, when we had the settings set up in Pandora that, you know, such that you record the left channel using your audio and then the right channel as your guest audio. So as you can see in this audio picture uh, below here, the upper part is actually your voice and the lower part is going to be your guest's voice. And remember, it was very important to make that setting in Pamela to separate out the channels because you want to be able to post-process each channel independently. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do here actually is we are going to split the tracks into their own independent tracks. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on split stereo to mono. And what that did is it actually split it into two independent tracks. And now we're going to actually post process each individual one separately. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is remember in the last video where I told you that it was important to leave five seconds of silence when you're recording your audio using Pamela. The reason for this silence is because the silence will allow you to isolate any of the background noise that you have in your audio and eliminate it from your audio stream. Okay, and So what you want to do is you want to go to that five seconds of silence and you want to highlight a section of it and go under effect and then noise removal. And you want to click this button called get noise profile. 
And what this, what's happening is it's getting a profile of all the ambient noise in your audio. Okay. And once you've done that, you want to go ahead and select the entire audio stream, select noise removal again, and then click OK. And what's going on here is it's removing all that ambient noise from your audio so that all the silences sound completely silent. And it essentially removes all the noise from your audio for that particular channel. Okay. And once you've done that, you want to do that for the other audio stream too, for the person that you interviewed. So once again, you want to select noise removal, get noise profile, and then you want to select the entire piece of audio, click on new noise removal, and then OK. Okay, at this point, usually what I do is I make it a stereo track once again, and then I go ahead and edit it however I want. I go in and remove ums and ahs, I remove silences and that sort of thing. Again, this is up to you how much and to what level you want to actually post-process your audio. But once you're done, you're ready to actually make the audio sound a lot better. So the first thing that I do is I make the stereo track into a mono stream. Okay, because right now, if you were to play this audio in your player, the left headphone would contain your voice and the right headphone would contain your guest. Obviously, you want both voices to be present in both sides of your headphones. Okay, so what I usually do is I convert the stereo track to mono. Okay, and then the first thing I do is I normalize. Okay, and what it means to normalize is it's making the audio as loud as possible without having clipping, without there being sound distortion essentially. Okay, and so once I've normalized the audio, the next step is to create, is to use the compressor. And remember how I told you to download Chris's Dynamic Compressor? I want you to select it now. It's called Compress Dynamics 1.2.6. Okay, and there's some magic settings here that I'm going to show you. And these are just settings that I experimented with, with audio, specifically voice-based audio, to make it sound really good and crisp. Okay, and so here are the settings that you need to set it at. So the compression ratio should be set at 0.8. The compression hardness should be set at 0.6. The floor should be at set at negative 24. The noise gate falloff should be set at 4. And the maximum amplitude should be set at 0.95. Now I'm not going to really get too technical and explain to you what all these settings are for, but I can tell you that these settings work extremely well for voice. Okay, and you know essentially what we're doing here is you know we're compressing the audio, and what that means is we're making it so that all the volume levels throughout the entire piece of audio are the same, so that even if I was shouting, it would it wouldn't sound out of the ordinary or too loud if I was whispering and shouting and alternating those two. Okay. The other thing this, this tool does is it creates a floor such that when there's complete silence, it literally is complete silence. And effectively, it removes all the ambient noise in your entire piece of audio. Okay. So once you're ready, you click OK. okay. And once you're done, your audio already should sound pretty good. And if you put on your headphones at this point and play the audio, it's going to sound pretty good as is. But one thing I like to do with my audio is I like to add a little bit more bass to my voice. Okay, and so what I do at this point is I go under Effect, Equalization, and then I select what's called Bass Boost. Okay, and then I click on OK. And what Bass Boost does is it adds a tremendous amount of depth to my voice so that my voice in the audio actually sounds better than real life. Okay, and once you've done all those steps, your audio is a is, is ready to go pretty much and you're ready to go ahead under file and then export the file in WAV format to whatever directory that you want and that my friends is all that it takes to make your audio sound professional and crisp okay and so when you're ready to go go ahead and save it out as WAV 16-bit PCM and then we'll go on to the next step of the tutorial